The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Reed McCoys. What is it Bonnie Google says to his wife there when she hits him over the head with a club? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> that Bonnie Google's a caution, ain't he? <laughs> you want me to read you the rest of the comics, Grandpa? No, that's for kids. Hey, go right into Pete in the Green, will you? Yeah. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, Lou. Uh, hi, little Lou. Grandpa, you're gonna be famous. What? Well, I entered the essay writing contest at school. I got a chance to win a $25 savings bond. Well, what's going to make me famous? Being a grandpa to a boy what owns a bond? No, I'm writing my essay about you. Well, say now, there's a fine idea. <laughs> well, I'm rightly proud of you, little Luke. If my story wins, it'll be printed right in the front page of the Valley Courier. Well, you got just as good a chance to win as anybody. I always did say you got a good knack for putting down. <laughs> yeah. The front page, huh? You're going to write all about me. As much as I know. Well, what you don't know, I'll tell you. Uh, say, uh, uh, right about the time say, I... Uh, how about the 4th of July mule derby at Smoky Corners Downs? You know, how you thought you had the race won until you fell off the mule when you waved to the grandstand? <laughs> That'd be funny. No, sir, you ain't gonna write nothing like that about me. If you're gonna write something about me, it's gotta be something uh, good I done. Uh, something to make me look like some of a figure. I better write something about you out of my own head. Why don't you write about the, uh, my fishing? I'm the best fisherman you ever seen. Tell him about the time at Hopkins. Grandpa, I found these under the back seat in the car. You must have missed a customer on your egg deliveries this morning. I don't think so. I got the delivery list right here. Now, here, let me see, Grandpa. Here now. Yeah, here, here's the first one, the fence. Mm, that's me picket. Two dollars. Yeah, well, you got a check after that, so you must have made that delivery. And next here is a hot water bottle. That's old lady's home, five dozen. <laughs> Next here is a dead tree. Dead tree? That's the Humboldt place. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a check there. Now, let's oh, see. I know, Luke. I know what it was now. Well, I had the two dozen left over. You, you draw the tree twice. I did? Yeah, sure. I'll look right in the other side. See? Grandpa, that ain't another dead tree. Them's antlers. <laughs> That's Mr. Bergstrom. He's an officer in the Moose Lodge. <laughs> Hey, see, you better uh, give another bug some picture there. Couldn't you draw a face on that moose? <laughs> All right, Grandpa. Well, I'll call Mr. Bergstrom later and tell him you deliver four dozen tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good idea, Chief. Hey, Grandpa, you ready for the feed and grain news now? No, I, I tell you, Luke, we can let that wait, because I, I want to help little Luke with his writing, see? Hey, you don't have to, Grandpa. I already decided what I'm going to write about you. What are you going to write about me? Well, I'll tell you when I'm finished. <laughs> in the next few days, you'll be reading my name right in that very paper. <laughs> wonder what it's going to sound like. Well, let's read something here and see. Yeah, why don't I just put your name in one of the items here in the paper? Good, go ahead. I'm yeah. listening. Yeah, here's one. Here. Uh, the Johnson's Billy Goat has still not been found. If any reader sees it, it answers to the name of Amos McCoy. <laughs> no, no, <Daniel. laughs> that ain't a bit funny. Uh, what'd you say? What'd you put down there? Oh, Grandpa, I'll never get it done with you standing over me. Well, well, tell him about the big black bass I caught with my bare hands. <laughs> Grandpa, the truth is the bottom fell out of the boat and the fish got caught in your overhauls. <laughs> now, will you let little Luke finish? He's only got till Wednesday and time's running out. Besides, the ID's got to pour out of his own head. Well, I was just trying to squeeze it a little so it'll pour easier. <laughs> come on, come on, Grandpa. Oh, 
Well, yeah, he, he wrote it pretty good, but just listen to this, listen. Yeah. My grandfather, Amos McCoy, was born in West Virginia a long time ago. As a little boy, he never had any schooling, being too busy working on his father's farm, growing corn and string beans for other people to eat. Even without school, though, my grandfather is as smart as they come. He's so smart that he'll figure out a way to lick a problem no matter what. Let's say he would have trouble keeping track of his egg customers. Oh, no. Yeah, and, and he goes on telling about Grandpa not being able to read and how he uses little signs and pictures when he's delivering eggs. <laughs> Kate, that's what the whole thing's about. I thought little Luke know that Grandpa don't want people to know he can't read. Well, where is it? Grandpa's story. Little Luke finish it? Well, yeah, he uh, finished it all right. Well, tell me about it. Is it good? It sure is well put down. Good, good. Well, you're right about it. Is it efficient? Well, most of it uh, tells about uh, <clears throat> uh, what a smart uh, man you are. Yeah, and uh, what a, what a, about what a swell brain you got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and the thinking that you do with it. What other smart things he put in there about me? Yes. Yeah. Now, look here. You two is exchanging looks. And that means something. <laughs> now, come on. What do you put down? Grandpa, little Luke wrote about your egg list. What? But he didn't mean no harm by it, Grandpa. Well, by writing about my egg list, he just come right out and said that I can't read. He just made me an ignorant old man. You, but you see, the way that little Luke put it down, he makes you out to be the, the smartest ignorant old man that he knows. <laughs> All the things he could have wrote about. Farming and fishing and weather predicting. Instead of that, he just makes me a laughing stock. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I thought he was writing about the most smartest thing I ever heard of. We know you did. Well, what you done, little Luke, was tell folks what a smart thing I'd done to hide my dumbness. I guess I never thought of it that way. Yeah, well, I know you didn't mean no harm by it. You know, I ain't angered at you. But I'd feel awful bad if the folks in town is to know I can't read. You see, what people don't know can't hurt me. It's a shame, little Luke. It's the best composition you ever wrote. Yeah, it's so, so well put down. Wait a minute now. Why all this hang dog thinking? Well, I can tell little Luke enough stories in ten minutes to fill a encyclopedia. Well, I gotta turn it in now, Grandpa. I guess I better forget the contest. See, one minute now, one god darn minute. Why does that have to be about me? What do you mean, Grandpa? Well, it don't take but a minute to change that name from from Grandpa McCoy to to somebody else to to say George McMichael, <laughs> you know, or, or maybe Mac McGinnis. <laughs> now, wait, you can't come out and say that George McMichael can't read, or R. Mac McGinnis neither. <laughs> well, then let's just make up a name. <laughs> Here now, how would this sound? Um, my grandpa, Jed Harrison, was born in West Virginia. A long wait. You can't say my grandpa, Jed Harrison. Why, everybody know right off it was our grandpa. Well, why not say you just plain Jed Harrison? I say it'll work. Golly, I think it will, too. Well, you just get to changing that, boy. You'll have that savings bond in no time. Grandpa? Huh? I still say you're the smartest man in the whole country. <laughs> well, it's rightly nice of you to say that, little Luke, but... Of course, we all know it ain't so. In the county, maybe, but not the whole country. Hey, hey, look at everybody. Wait till you see this. What is it? What is it? It's in the paper here. Uh, the Valley Courier is proud to announce the five finalists in the essay contest. Calvin Oaks, a happy fireman. Oh, that's the title of his piece. <laughs> Richard Stoveroff, a president of a company. Bridget Sweeney, my mother's dressmaker. L. Luke McCoy, Jed Harrison back home. <laughs> <laughs> McCoy, you got it. I'm proud of you, boy. Let me see where's Oh, that's his right there, Grandpa. All that print is about our boy. 
Who's the fifth finalist, Luke? Oh, uh, uh, Willis Axtetter, <laughs> my grandfather. Well, he did write about his grandpa, huh? Willis Axtetter. Well, I guess some grandpas has got it and some ain't. I'll write about you someday, Grandpa. Yeah, and what did he call me then? Harry Crenshaw? Oh, Grandpa, little Luke's one of the winners. We ought to be grateful. Yeah, I, I guess. Say, it says here that members of the town council and... They're going to be at the school auditorium for the reading and everything. It's sure enough going to be a big thing. Yeah. Well, in that case, little Luke, you're going to have to look your best. I wonder if we have a clean, good shirt for you. I ironed two yesterday. You can wear my new pokey dot tie. Oh, boy! Uh, what yeah. about your good pants? You don't know. I've seen his good pants. They're awful baggy. Looks like he's been smuggling cantaloupe in the knees. <laughs> I'll iron them out. Luke, you're going to have to give him a haircut. Yeah, all right. And yeah, now, hold on. The boy's famous, ain't he? Well, yeah. And right now, he's the family's leading citizen, ain't he? Well, sure he is. Then I say a famous McCoy leading citizen should go first class. I say the boy with the golden pen is entitled to a town shoe shine, a damn pants press, and to top it off, a town haircut. Oh, boy, my first bought haircut. <laughs> you know them barber shops cut it awful close. <laughs> You're going to have to start washing your neck up a little higher. <laughs> I let him jump one of my men, then I jump four of his. <laughs> Boy, I'll bet he was burning up. <laughs> Look who's pulling up at the curb over there, old Amos McCoy. Yeah. Did you see that thing in this morning's paper that his grandson wrote? Yeah. It was real cute, wasn't it, the way the old boy made them egg deliveries? Using them little pictures. Yeah. And you've got to admit, it was pretty foxy of him to say it was another fellow named Jed Harrison. Oh, the thing was about him, it's all right. I always had a hunch he couldn't read. Sure. I I'll never forget the day he came into my store, bought something and gave me an I.O.U., signed it with an X. <laughs> and then he explained it away by saying he was in a hurry. <laughs> Hey, don't tell me he's going to start buying haircuts. <laughs> Morning, Bert. Morning. This is my grandson, Little Luke McCoy. Is this the lad that did all that writing? You got it done right. <laughs> you regular racy algae? <laughs> I'd sort of like to get his hair cut you so he'd look good when he gets up on the platform, you see. Son, that Jed Harrison you wrote about, he must have been quite a fella. Yeah, he was all right. All right. Well, he was one of the greatest men that West Virginia ever turned out. You know, he's one of the few men that I ever know that could outthink a catfish. There you are, Nathan. You can go out and break a few feminine hearts. Ready for the author. Oh, that's you, little. Get up here and sit yourself down. The boy's a little jumpy, you see. This is his maiden clip. Haircut <laughs> for a famous writer. You know, one thing about the writing, it never said what kind of a looking fellow this Jed Harrison was. Oh, he was, he was kind of on the short side. I'd say he was, uh, oh, maybe uh, four foot tall. And he, uh, um... He was bald. Yeah, yeah, he was bald. Yeah. And, uh, he never wore his hat brim all the down all right. It's kind of hard to figure from the composition just how old he was. What would you say? Oh, I'd say he was, uh, 44. Uh, 44. <laughs> Hard to tell how old he was, you see. He changes age in the drop of a hat. <laughs> Say, hurry up, will you now, Bert? I won't, we got a lot of things to do. I sure love the way Jed Harrison delivered them eggs. <laughs> yeah, can't read a word, but he sure knows his pictures. <laughs> Who draws them pictures for him, Amos? How do I know? Well, why don't you ask him sometime? He can't. Grandpa Harrison lives in West Virginia. Grandpa Harrison? He now you got the boy all riled up in his head. I'm sorry, Jed. Uh, that just... Come on, little Luke, we get your shoe shine. Now you see what I mean when I say I don't want you to get a town haircut. You get a lot of talking and no cutting. <laughs> I'll take two dozen eggs. Just put down on your list the picture of a haircut. <laughs> Grandpa, how could the barber tell it was you? Oh, some people's got suspect in mind. It's a good thing everybody ain't like that. You speed it up a little, will you, Henry? Sure thing, Mr. Harrison. <laughs> oh, another flap jaw, huh? Well, forget your shine, little Luke. Come on, I'll get your pants ready. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
want your fault. All that Jed Harrison business, that was my idea. Yeah, but I... Anyhow, you can't run away tonight. Who's going to read your piece in the school auditorium tomorrow? Oh, I can't go through with it, Grandpa. I can't stand up in that auditorium and make a fool of you again. Son, now listen. That piece of yours is so doggone good that somebody's going to read it at that contest, even if you don't. Oh, by that time, I'll be halfway around the world. Maybe even as far as Los Angeles. Now, hey, listen to me, Mitch. You just wait till tomorrow, see? And maybe by that time I'll have a new ID, see? You said in your piece today that I was great for figuring out new ID, didn't you? Yeah, but... Well, look, you just wait till tomorrow now, and if I don't figure out an ID by tomorrow morning, then we'll get Kate to make you a sandwich, and you can put a new piece of cardboard in your shoe, and you can run away in style. Okay, Grandpa. Yeah, so boy. <laughs> Judges, for the record, that was Calvin Oakes, the happy fireman. Well, that's four of them done. That just leaves little Luke to read his. I just can't understand why Grandpa would come here and leave himself open to this. Ain't he heard enough from town yesterday? Beats me. And now for our concluding essay by L. Luke McCoy, grade 8B. Title, Jed Harrison, Back Home. <laughs> oh, Mr. Harrison. <laughs> I'll fix that now. Uh, now, Lynch, you see, Luke, I got the situation well under cover. Yeah, but he's gonna... Little Luke's about to say his piece. Go ahead, little Luke. Yes, ma'am. Jed Harrison was born in West Virginia a long time ago. As a little boy, Jed never had any schooling. Being too busy working on his own father's farm, growing corn and string beans and... <coughs> <laughs> Are you all right, little Luke? Do you want me to finish it for you? Well, thank you, ma'am. But would you mind if my grandpa finished reading it for me? <laughs> oh, that would be very nice. Has little Luke gone plumb out of his brains? What's he saying? <laughs> well, what you waiting for, Jen? Read it for the boy. <laughs> well, that's just what I aim to do. Grandpa, what are you going to do? <laughs> Sit yourself down to rest, son. I'll carry on from here. Jed Harrison was born in West Virginia a long time ago. As a little boy, Jed never had much schooling. <laughs> Being too busy working on his father's farm, growing corn and string beans for other people to eat. 
even without school, though, Jed is as smart as they come. He'll figure out a way to lick a problem no matter what. <laughs> Let's say he would have trouble keeping track of his egg customers. Jed delivers eggs every morning. Jingles. He's reading. <laughs> Not being able to read, he had to figure out a way to tell who his customers was and how many dozen they'd need. Before he would get in his car to go into town, he would get the egg list from his nephew, Buster Harrison, with two R's. On his route, he would first go to Miss Pickett's. The sign for her was a picket fence. <laughs> well, it looks, with this here savings bond, looks like you're on the road to being a rich man. You sure helped, Grandpa, the way you read the speech. Hey, Grandpa, you're the brightest human alive. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the look on that barber's face? He sure was befuddled. <laughs> well, it just goes to show you there's more than one way to... Just in a word. 